do you do when you're not happy with where you are spiritually? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Welcome to OneChurch.tv. My name's Luther, and we are so glad you've decided to hang out with us today. If it's your first time with us or first time in a long time, we would love for you to text CONNECT1C to 97000. That's a way where we can let you know what's going on in the life of our church. Also, we're going to reach out every week and find out how we can pray for you. What you're going to experience today is a time of worship through song. We're going to have an opportunity to give, and then we're going to hear a message. Thank you for hanging out with us today, and we hope you enjoy.
Hey, we hope you enjoyed that time of worship through song. We're now going to have an opportunity to share in our generosity. Because you give at OneChurch.tv, we're able to partner with local ministries like Mana Cafe. We support ministries like Radical Mission. 
Those are ways that we love the community, that we show that we are for Clarksville. You can give. You're going to see them here at the bottom of the screen today on our website, onechurch.tv slash give. You can give through the One Church app, and you'll see the address where you can mail checks or money orders. Guys, thank you so much for continuing to support One Church as we work on our mission of reaching people for Jesus Christ. I've reached this stage in my life where uh, I'm not thrilled, and I, I hate to confess this, but they say confession is good for the soul, and you all are my friends, my people. I think this is a safe space, so I'm just going to share it with you. I've reached this place in my life uh, where I cannot stand up without making a noise. Any men over 40 years old watching, y'all know what I'm talking about? That grunt, that, oh, that, now I've got some army injuries that flare up every now and then, and I've, I've practiced martial arts for several, several years, and over a decade, actually, so my joints are stiff at times, and got the bad shoulders and the tight back, and I know all of that stuff. I've, I've even come to terms with the fact that sometimes I have to warm up just to put my shoes on, right? I got to make sure my knees and my hips don't lock up on me again. All you 20-year-old soldiers out there judging me right now, be quiet with all your high metabolism and mandatory workplace five mile runs. You don't get what I'm talking about. But the, the brothers watching who are, who are north of 40, you guys, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We get to that place in life where we get a little stiff and we get a little tight and, 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 and we, we make all these noises when we move and it's a part of growing up and it, and it hurts, you know, and, and, and we got to warm up just to do normal exercises. And, and I get it. And it makes getting up hard. It makes that first part of the day a little tough. You know, your ankles are cracking a little bit as you're walking into the, the bathroom maybe early in the morning. You know what I'm talking about? We get a little stiff because our bodies deteriorate and we know if we want to change that, we have to continually change and adapt in our lives. When I talk to people about what the hardest part of their day is, a lot of people will tell me the hardest part is going to work with all those knuckleheads. The hardest part of my day is my, my boss who frustrates me. The hardest part of the day is, is my employees who are demanding. And, but here's what I think the truth is. I think the hardest part of our day is those first 30 to 60 minutes of our day. That moment where we have a choice to make. What's today going to be like? What am I going to do to make today better? What am I going to do to improve and learn from the mistakes of yesterday? What am I going to do to push myself to a better place? How am I going to make it through? I think all of those decisions typically happen within the first 30 to 60 minutes of our day. I can tell you in my own personal life, when my alarm clock goes off early in the morning, I do not want to get up. I do not want to start reading. I do not want to go down to the gym and lift weights or go to a jiu-jitsu class and throw human beings around. Not at 6 o'clock in the morning. Not at 7 o'clock in the morning. Like My first instinct is to not want to do those things. But here's what I know in my own personal life. I know that when I make the choice to grab my Bible and start reading, when I make the choice to spend some time in prayer talking to God, when I make the choice to go pick up those kettlebells and those dumbbells anyway, I always feel better on the other end. I push through because I know it's going to make me better. In that first 30 to 60 minutes, I wage war against apathy and laziness and my frustrations and the things that I know want to hold me back. I fight against them actively at the beginning of the day. And what I discovered in my own personal life is it helps me throughout 
the rest of my day. Do I get this right 100% of the time? Not at all. That's why my shirt says, kind of fit, kind of fat. Like, I get it. I'm not perfect in this in any way, shape, or form. I'm not sharing any of this to boast in who I am and what I do. I just want you to know that I know the struggle is real to, to be better. The struggle is real. You want to do the right thing. You want to grow, but you're not always able to hit that mark. I know the struggle is real, but just because the struggle is real, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be a part of the struggle. I know that hard work works. Pretty logical, right? Speaking of logic, did you hear about the person that lost tons of weight by listening to podcasts about how to lose weight? Have you heard of that person? Or did you hear about the guy who, who met the girl of his dreams by staying home, binge watching romantic comedies? He never left his house, but he still happened to meet the woman of his dreams just by staying home, right? We've never met this person. You've never met the lady who improved in her career and advanced by reading nothing but books while she stayed, you know, struggling at work and not doing a good job, but she read books by Gary Vaynerchuk on how to crush it while she crushed nothing. Do you read about that person who became successful in doing that? Of course not. That's illogical. It's silly. We know that if you want something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done before. We know that if you want something new in your life, you have to do new things. In order to get something you've never had, you got to do something different. You got to change your mindset. You got to change your activities. You got to change your behaviors. Basically, if you're not happy with where you are physically, what do you do? You have to work out. In fact, no matter what shape you are in, you can always work out. No matter what shape you're in physically, we know this to be true as a principle. Anyone, you know, who, who, most people can get up and you can walk 30 minutes a day. You say, well, what about someone who's in a wheelchair? Well, obviously, silly, they can't walk. I'm, you don't, don't mess my point up. That person can still do something. They can, you know what I'm saying? Most people can do something no matter what. Physically, we can move, we can keep ourselves in shape. And that's, that's true. It's never too late to make a move towards health. And we know that principle physically. Hang with me. We know this principle physically, but let me tell you, I think, and I think the Bible backs this up, that those principles also apply spiritually. No matter what spiritual shape you're in, you can always work out. Think about it. When it comes to your relationship with God, what kind of shape? Are you in today? Maybe you're watching and you know you're you're skeptical to this whole Christianity stuff. You don't know about this, this Jesus guy, but there's something in you you're not satisfied with. And so you're seeking and you're searching and you're looking for answers to some of those deep questions in life. And I get it. And that's a form of spiritual shape for sure. It's a condition that you're in, just like I have a condition I'm in. Maybe you're new to this Jesus stuff, so you said yes to Jesus, but you know what? You want to go deeper, but you don't know how. You want to grow a little bit more, but you don't know how. And I encourage you, listen to the last three weeks of this series, and we'll give you some very practical steps on how to go a little bit deeper in your faith. Or maybe you've been following Jesus for a long time, and you still know there's something more for me. Let me just ask you plainly, do you want to go deeper in your walk with God? Do you want to go deeper in your relationship with with Jesus. That's what relationships are about, right? They're all about growth. They're all about going deeper. I know in my marriage, I'm happy to say I'm, I am more in love with my wife today than I have ever been. That's that process of going deeper and in growing. Think about your relationship with God. Do you want to go deeper? No matter where you are, no matter what spiritual shape you're in, no matter what condition you find yourself in today, it's never too late to make a move towards spiritual health. It's never too late. No matter what shape you're in, you can always work out. In fact, it's our big idea today. A deep faith is one that is exercised. A deep faith is one that is exercised. The Bible talks about faith a lot. The Bible defines faith as the assurance of something I'm hoping for, believing in something that I cannot yet see, but believing and living it as if it's real right now. The Bible says that those who are, are righteous or have that right relationship with God, we live by faith. The Bible act, actually tells us as well that we walk by faith, not by sight. So this isn't some blind, just going nowhere. No, it's standing on God's truth and living our life as if that truth is absolutely real. And a deep faith is one that is exercised. If you want to go deeper, we got to get out of the shallows, right? And that's going to take working out. If we want to go deeper, we have to move out of the shallows, and that is going to take working out. We know that principle physically. We know when it comes to physical shape, I got to exercise to, to improve. The same thing is true spiritually. But don't take my word for it. We're going to look at 
one of the greatest leaders in the Bible and what he taught a church about this very concept. And you'll actually see how he talks about this big idea in it, to an ancient church. And it still speaks to us all these years later. And it's really, really cool. In the book of Philippians, found in the Christian scriptures in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest leaders in history, but definitely one of the greatest leaders in the Bible, he talks a lot about faith and what it looks like lived out. And I just think he really, really sets us up for how we can get out of the shallows and go a little bit deeper. Let me tell you about the church at Philippi. It's really cool for those of us, especially if you're here and you're watching uh, in Clarksville, Tennessee. Shout out to all my Fayetteville, North Carolina family, Manor Church family that might be watching and tuning in. If you're connected to a military town, what we have in common with the church at Philippi is Philippi was actually a Roman military colony full of Roman veterans. So Philippi was actually a military town, much like Clarksville, much like Fayetteville, much like Colleen, wherever you're at, much like Savannah, much like, you know, Columbus, Georgia. Fayetteville, excuse me, Philippi was a city where veterans were, where soldiers were. And so there's a lot of cool connections between uh, what we know of as soldiers and how we live our life and what Paul's writing in that letter. So he's writing this letter. If you're, if you're here listening, he's writing this letter to people who, although we're separated by so much time and geography and language, they were going through a lot of the same things those of us in the military context are going through. And that's really neat. In the second chapter of Philippians, here's what Paul says, verse 12. Dear friends, you have always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. So Paul's in jail. He's locked up right now. He's not with them. So now that I'm away, it's more important that you follow my instructions. And here's what he tells them. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. You say, wait a minute, pump the brakes. Work hard to show the results of my salvation? You might be thinking, Carlo, didn't you tell me that I'm, uh, salvation is received by faith, not by my works? Didn't Pastor Chris tell me that I can't earn my salvation? And, and, and you would be absolutely correct in saying that. We can't earn our salvation. OneChurch.tv, we truly believe exactly what the Christian script, scriptures teach us. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not our works. It's the gift of God. We can't boast in it. We don't earn right standing with God. Our works don't save us and our works don't keep us saved. We believe that's what the Bible teaches and that's, we believe what Jesus taught and what Paul taught and so that's what I'm telling you. So listen to me if you're, if you're, if you're still not, not keeping up with what I'm saying, if you're frustrated, if you've checked out and you think that I'm talking about any type of works-based salvation, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, Paul's saying is, we have to work to show the results of our salvation. He's saying, listen folks, Work hard to show that the world to show the world that God has changed your life. Our works don't do the saving, God does. In fact, next verse, verse 13, Paul says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So Paul's saying, listen up, friends. God is the one who works in you so that you can work out your faith. If you want your faith to grow, if you want to see others grow in their relationship with Jesus, then you have to work out what God is working in. I'll say it again. You have to work out what God is working in. And the best part is that God will not only give you the power to exercise your faith, he'll give you the desire to do it. Our faith isn't worked out just by consuming things. Our faith isn't worked out just by listening to podcasts and reading books. That, that's input. And input is great and we need it and listen to podcasts and read those books. But our faith is exercised by so much more than that. Our faith is exercised when we do something with what God has given us. When we do something with all the things that God has given us, that's when our faith is actually worked out. For example, Brian Shaw is the four-time world's strongest man. Check out this picture of Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw is the four-time world's strongest man. He's a, he's a hero of mine, a sports hero of mine. I love following him. He's got a great family, just a solid, all-American dude. I love Brian Shaw. By the way, in the picture that you're seeing, Brian is standing next to the former heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson, often known as the baddest man on the planet. And I want you to take in that image 
Mike Tyson is not a small human being. I mean, he's not tall, but he's definitely not in stature a small human being. But look at how tiny he looks compared to the six foot eight, four time world's strongest man, Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw, by the way, he can deadlift a thousand pounds. He can press an obese human being over his head for repetitions, you know. Um, but imagine what the world's strongest man would look like if all he did was eat and eat and eat. Brian Shaw consumes about 10,000 calories a day when he's in training. 10,000 calories a day he has to eat just to maintain that physique and that strength. But imagine what he would look like if all he did was eat and never worked out. He might look like this. He might look like Thor did with his dad bod, right? After a while, Brian's gonna get a little saggy. He's gonna get a little soggy in some places. Many of us know something about that, right? He's gonna get a little soft in some places. But what if he continued it? What if he stayed on that diet over and over and over again? He may look like this, right? He may end up looking like Jabba the Hutt, all slimy and sloppy and greasy and gross, right? Now, obviously, he wouldn't look like uh, a fictional alien. I don't know. Maybe he would. But you get the point. If you just take in 10,000 calories a day and you're not lifting heavy weights and working out three hours a day, it's going to be detrimental to your health. You say, what in the world does that have to do with Philippians? Here's what I know. Input with no output equals overload. In just about any area of life, you pick a field of science, you pick a field in, in, in the medical world, you pick a field in any concept we could think of, if all you do is intake and there's no output, whatever that system is, it will eventually overload. It's going to completely give out. It'll be worthless if all you do is consume. If all you do is take in the best Christian books and you read the Bible every day and you listen to sermons and you listen to sermons and you, 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 you're listening to Christian radio, you're doing all that stuff, just consuming, 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 but there's never any output with that. If you don't do anything with the material, you're just overloading yourself. You are basically becoming spiritually constipated. Sorry for being crass, but that's what will happen to you. You'll be backed up. And here's what happens when you're overloaded. You will, you'll actually short circuit a little bit and you'll never take a step towards action because you'll be so overwhelmed with all of the data you had. You don't need to take another class. You don't need to read another book on how to love someone. You don't need to listen to another sermon necessarily on how to live like Jesus. But we think we need that stuff. So we intake, 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 intake with no output. And we ended up overloaded. I know a lot of Christ followers. I won't drop any names. Some of y'all just got nervous. I won't drop any names, but I know a lot of you who are living below God's best for your life. You're living below your potential as a leader, as a father, as a mother, because you think you need to read one more book before you can take that step in a positive direction. You think you need to hear one more sermon. You think you need to have one more counseling session before you actually do the things God's called you to do. For some of my friends out there, you know, from a charismatic background, you think you need one more word from God. I just need a word from God before I can step forward. And listen, he's given you 66 books full of his word. He's already told you so much through the scripture that you can live out. Intake with no output equal overload. But output with no intake is going to lead to exhaustion. So there's a reason we listen to sermons. There's a reason we read books and we have spiritual supplements and we listen to podcasts and we have healthy conversations with healthy Christian leaders and mentors and coaches and all of that stuff. There's a reason we do that because if all I'm doing is working, 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 and I never stop and pause to take care of myself, I'm going to be completely exhausted. I'm going to burn out. Maybe you're watching and, you know, you serve on every single team. You show up every time the church asks you. You know, you give regularly. You're every service. You're volunteering. You're volunteering. But when do you stop to recover? When do you open the Bible just to grow? Or are you always preparing the next lesson or preparing the next devotional? Or are you always thinking about what you're going to do with this? So there's this, this give and take that happens with this. And this is true physically. We know this. Brian Shaw, world's strongest man, you know what he does? About every other day, he gets in an ice tub. He goes to chiropractors. If you could believe there's a chiropractor who could handle someone that big. He gets his back adjusted. He does therapy. He does muscle massage. He, he takes care of himself. He treats himself. And he makes sure that he's eating good stuff to fuel his body so that he doesn't flame out. That's what the deeper life looks like physically. And it's the same truth spiritually. Intake with no output, overload. Output with no intake 
exhaustion? Do you want a deeper faith, a healthy faith? Then my friends, you have to work out what God is working in. So what does that look like? Well, here, I'm glad you asked. Here's what Paul says, verse 14. Paul said, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. It's at that point, I wanna take the Bible and shut it because that's too much on my toes. I don't like that. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. When I was in the army, we took a PT test, a physical fitness test, and, and some soldiers would only work out just to pass that test. You had to pass the test to keep the job. So some soldiers would only train a two-mile run. How many push-ups can I do in two minutes? How many sit-ups can I do in two minutes? Now I know there's a new test out, but this was an old test that we had to take. And, and, and that's all good when all you're doing is just taking this predetermined planned test. But then we went to war. And in wartime environment, uh, the, the army quickly discovered that, wait a minute, push-ups and sit-ups and two-mile runs aren't necessarily preparing soldiers for all of the stuff that they're going to deal with in war. Now, that's part of the catalyst of why they actually change that test. If all you do is train for this very distilled, sterile environment, when everything goes crazy, you're going to end up bent out of shape. You're not going to make it. And so, same again, physical principle applied spiritually. So Paul said, do everything without grumbling, compla complaining. What that means, do everything without complaining and arguing, that takes a lot of practice. That means I have to work it out. That means I have to constantly put myself in uncomfortable positions so that I can work out what God is working in me. We have uncomfortable conversations so that we can practice these fruit of the Spirit that God gives us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I reach out to others. I get out of my comfort zone so that I can work out what God's doing in me and through me. Think about it. Everyone wants to be thought of as a servant. We think servant, servant living is a great way, but everyone wants to be thought of as a servant until you treat them like one. And then when you're treated like a servant, you get puffed up. Don't talk to me like that. Don't put me in. Paul said, do everything without grumbling and complaining. That means the lowliest job, I'm going to know this is just helping me work out my faith. And when I have that change of perspective, there's no task that's too menial for me because I realize this is an opportunity to practice what I preach to work out my faith. You can't just work out your faith in the sterile confines of a church or when the pastor is around. Do everything without grumbling and complaining. That means I have to be aware of how God can use the situation to make me grow. I have to work out what God is working in. Paul finishes that thought by saying, live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. So Paul is saying, this is how we work out our salvation. We're living clean lives. We're, we're doing our best to shine in a dark world. This all connects to, I'm doing my best to live the way that Jesus would have me live. I'm asking, what does love require of me? I'm sacrificing. I'm serving. I'm speaking up for those who are hurting and those who are broken. I'm doing all these uncomfortable things because I know this is how I actually am working out my faith. You guys still with me? Again, this doesn't happen because of our will. God gives us the power and the desire to do this. And that's awesome. Verse 16, Paul said, hold firmly to the word, hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run a race in vain and that my work was not useless. So hold firmly to the word of life. As I mentioned uh, earlier, there's, there's a surefire way to get into poor physical shape, we know that. It's to take in more than you burn off. And you can save the diet plans and the weight loss plans. Don't spend another dime on the latest book or workout equipment. It's very simple. If you put in more than you're putting out, you're absolutely going to gain weight. You're, you're, you're not going to be in the best physical shape. We've heard the saying, you are what you eat. I sit before you, a chicken wing, because I love chicken wings, so I must be part chicken wing by now, right? We, we love that stuff. Seriously, though, I know for every indulgence that I would jump into those chicken wings, I know I'm going to have to pay for this. I know this is going to be an extra 10 minutes in the gym. I'm going to get on the bike. I'm going to lift a little more weights. I'm going to lift heavier tomorrow because I'm eating all this stuff today. I know that. What does it have to do with spiritual shape? Everything, because you are what you eat. 
you are what you eat. We, we would know that physically. If I'm eating junk, my, my body's going to feel like junk, and, and maybe my body might look like junk. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I know I am what I eat. So what are you feeding yourself spiritually? Paul is telling the church in Philippi, hold firmly to the word of life. He's telling us, hold firmly to the word of life, hold firmly to God's word. That's what the first part of this series was all about, is here's how we grow. We get into God's word. We feed ourselves good things. We fuel on good things, and then we do what those good things are asking us to do. That's the Christian life. I'm going to read God's word, and I'm going to do my best with his help to live that out in my everyday life, and that's going to keep me in spiritual shape. And at the end of the day, those who've invested in us spiritually, like Paul said, their work's not going to be useless. It won't be like they ran a race in vain because we're actually doing something with all that's been put into us. If you're in bad physical shape, the good news is it's never too late to start, right? I'm not, trying to, I'm not talking about trying to look like you're 20 again. That ship has sailed for some of us, right? I'm talking about feeling good, being healthy for your age. The same is true spiritually. Thank God. Thank God that his grace says it's never too late. But you got to make sure that you're not feeding yourself on fluff, that we're really getting into God's word, that we're not sitting with a full spiritual stomach, just listening to sermons and watching videos and then never doing anything with it. You can like as many Facebook posts, Instagram posts as you want when it comes to the issues that bother Jesus or the issues that are spiritual. But if you're not actually getting up and doing something about it, you're just letting yourself kind of become this spiritual glutton. And we know that gluttony is not for us. We have to condition ourselves, be in the best spiritual shape you can be in by working out. Check out this picture of this exercise equipment. For some of you, this picture represents your spiritual life, full of potential and capabilities. Look at it. You can do, you can do some, some presses. You can do some, some nice flies there. You could probably do some, some leg extensions on the machine there. There's so much potential for a total body workout. And for some of you, this picture represents your spiritual life. You got all the potential, all the capability, but you're collecting dust because of inaction. Spider webs growing on you. Everything you need to grow is already there, just like that weight machine. Everything you need to, to get healthier is already there, but if you don't use it, it just sits on the shelf. And for some of you spiritually, everything you need to go deeper, to get out of the shallows, God's already given it to you. It's already there. The only thing missing is for you to start working out. I've been transparent at onechurch.tv about some of my health struggles and the ups and downs, and I'll spare you the, the long boring story, but the, the bottom line is there was a moment in my life when I got out of the army and, and I lived on a cocktail of steroids and immunosuppressants because of some illnesses and injuries I had and I was in chronic pain and, and I was just so out of weight, very little muscle, uh, overweight, excuse me, and very little muscle mass and I couldn't walk 25 yards without just sweating and breathing heavy and it, I was in a bad way and I made a choice to change my life. I said, God, you've come to lead people. I want to lead in health. And, and, and a good Christian friend of mine, he reached out to me and we connected. And, and another Christian friend of mine, he gave me some diet plan stuff. And, and the long story short, I, there was a season in my life where I'd lost over like a hundred pounds, uh, just getting after it, training three times a day, just insane level, which I don't recommend, like an insane obsession to kind of get to this place. And, and that's not sustainable. And you know that. And what happened slowly, but surely I started to gain weight again. Now, thank God, some of that was, I was lifting a lot of weights and eating food. And so, uh, you know, I was bulking up and, and as, as Jamie, my wife would say, I was getting a little swole and I'm okay with that. Um, but it was bothering me that I felt like, God, I'm, I feel like I'm taking so many steps back after all this progress. And when I went to the doctor uh, about a year ago, did all my blood work and, and had a conversation with him, I was at that point, probably the heaviest I'd been in several years. So I was kind of just down on myself of, man, God, what am I doing? What am I doing? And, and my doctor's like, man, keep doing what you're doing. So I'm thinking what I was doing isn't working. And he's saying, no, man, keep doing what you're doing. Keep lifting weights. Keep doing jujitsu. Make sure you're paying attention to what you eat. Obviously, you know, we, everyone could stand to lose some, some weight. If you want to do that, do that. But just know your blood work is good. Just know, man, you're healthy. All is well. And uh, that was a really cool moment for me. What I thought was a bad gain was actually a good form of a gain. But, but, but it all connected with this idea of being consistent and doing something, trying to make sure I was working out. Why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you because I really want you to know, you, 
The person right now struggling. The person right now who feels like, man, every time I take five steps forward in life, physically or spiritually, I feel like I just keep falling off the wagon. I want you to know that I get it, that the struggle is real, that I've been there and I've lived through that. And I want you to know you may have a setback, but it's okay. Keep moving forward. Keep working on what God is working in. I may not work out three days a week anymore and, and do all of that stuff, uh, you know, or, or I do work out three days a week. I may not work out three times a day like I used to back in the day, but what I do know is that little bit of obsession sparked something in me where I was able to be a little more consistent. And so every single day now I can work, I can take one step towards what I want to be, who I want to be. Where are you at with all this? Are you unhappy with where you are spiritually? Do you want more? Are you ready for your next step with Jesus, your next step in the life of the church? Exercise your faith by working out on what God is working in. Exercise your faith by working on what God is working in. In the world of physical fitness, we use uh, this acronym that kind of helps make workouts effective. And the acronym is FIT. FIT, F-I-T-T, and it just stands for frequency, intensity, time, and type. So when we talk about frequency physically, we're basically talking about how often are you going to work out. So you're going to work out two days a week, three days a week, five days a week. When we talk about intensity, we talk about how hard are you going to work out when you're working out. So are you going to, you know, have long breaks? Are you going to have short breaks? What's the intensity level going to be like? And then we talk about time. How long per session are you going to work out? So you say, I'm going to work out three days a week, and I'm going to do moderate intensity. Well, how long are you going to do that for? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour when you're doing those sessions. And then finally, we talk about type. And type just refers to, you guessed it, what type of exercise are you going to do? Are you going to lift weights? Are you going to run? Are you doing anaerobic? Are you doing cardio? Those are, so that's all, the point of all that is it gives you a plan. If you have a plan when you work out, it'll help you. Most fitness goals fail. We know this from the research. Most fitness goals fail because we don't have a plan. We lack a plan. And let me tell you, the same thing is true spiritually. So let's look at fit from the lens of spiritual fitness, of, of what do we do? How do we work out our faith with fear and trembling? Like Paul says, how do we live this out? How do we work it out? Well, think about frequency. I challenge you this week, do one thing every day to grow your faith. Have a plan, frequency. Every day, I'm gonna do something to grow my faith. That means I'm gonna study the scripture, I'm gonna read what God says, or maybe I listen to a sermon and they give me an action step. And so today I'm gonna do one thing to live that out. That's all, that's all it takes. Just one step of generosity, one, one little nudge towards the way of Jesus, and it's a game changer. Then think about intensity. This involves getting outside of your comfort zone. This involves going above and beyond what you would normally do. And I have to have a plan for that intensity. Am I going to step out of my comfort zone and invest some time in someone that I might not have been around? Am I going to invite someone to, to watch a service or come connect with me? Or however, we're able to do that. We want to think about the intensity of it. So this week, think about that. What's my comfort zone? What's the block that's holding me in from growing spiritually? Oh, I don't really give regularly because uh, I'm a little nervous about that. Well, maybe you need to pick up the intensity there and, and, and go a little bit farther. Think about time. Time. Be intentional. Have an intentional plan for how you spend your time. You know, whether you're serving weekly or monthly, I would just challenge you to start daily. How much of your day are you giving to God? Are you giving to spiritual growth? So maybe you need a plan where you say, hey, I'm going to read the Bible every day and what I'm in, in the intensity of reading the Bible is going to involve, hey, I really want to try to memorize a verse. That's out of my comfort zone. That's intense. I'm going to try to memorize a verse, and I'm going to dedicate 30 minutes a day to reading the Bible and memorizing this verse. Frequency, intensity, time, and then type. This is just being on the lookout for new opportunities to grow your faith. So I'm going to mix it up. So it's not all going to be, oh, I'm going to memorize some Bible verse. It's not all going to be, hey, I'm just going to be generous. Or it's not all going to be, I'm going to invite people. It's going to be a mix up of all of these things. I'm going to keep it moving so that I can keep growing spiritually. Most fitness goals fail because of a lack of a plan. And most spiritual goals fail 
because we don't have a plan or a strategy. And I think this is a really cool practical strategy that we can have. Listen, the principles that we apply physically, we know some of those principles, especially in this case, they absolutely apply to us spiritually. No matter what shape you're in, you can always work out. It's never too late to take a step towards spiritual health. And if you want to get out of the shallows, if you want to go deeper in your walk with God, deeper in your walk with Jesus, you have to work out because a deep faith is one that is exercised. Pray with me. God, we love you. Thank you for doing such a great work inside all of us. God, for the person watching right now who's, who's not connected to you, they're not following you, I just pray you would speak to their heart. And right now where they are, God, that they would just say, God, I'm sorry for trying to do it on my own. I need you. Would you help me? Forgive me for where I've blown it. And God, I want to do things your way. And I, I thank you, God, that you hear our heart. You hear us when we open our mouths and say, God, that we want to follow you. You forgive us. You save us. And I, God, I'm just thankful for that. For those here who, want to, who, who are listening, God, who want to grow deeper and continue in their walk with you and, and take it to just better places, not for us, not so that we could just walk around as these kind of spiritual bodybuilders showing off. God, no, we want other people to grow in the relationship with you. We want other people to know you. We want other people to be set free. That's why we're working it out. So God, would you just bring to our mind right now where we're sitting, bring to our heart opportunities that we have to continue to push forward, to get out of the shallows, God, and to go deeper in our walk with you. We know that's where you want to meet us. We know that's where you're leading us. And God, we're thankful that we can't do any of that without your help. In the strong name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, it's Luther again. We are so glad you hung out with us today. We hope you enjoyed the service. If you have kids in your home, birth through fifth grade, they have a service for them that you can sit down with them right now and enjoy. You can do that at onechurch.tv slash kids. Also, if you have students in middle or high school, we have a Wednesday night experience called Inside Out. You can connect with that by visiting our website again, onechurch.tv slash students. If you enjoyed today's message and have questions or just want to connect with us, we do a thing called the five after that will go five minutes after this video, usually somewhere a few minutes before 10 o'clock, live on Facebook. We would love to see you there and answer any questions. Guys, once again, thank you so much for being a part of onechurch.tv. We hope to see you next week.